Hey, today we're going to do a bit of a fun project with an old Glengarry. As you probably know, Glengarry bonnets were invented uh, by Colonel Alistair McDonald of Glengarry back in the 1820s, I believe it was. And originally they were very high. Um, they evolved into something flatter, what I call a low crown or a low rise Glengarry, with the feature being a straight brim and a, rather, a relatively low crown, generally about the width of your palm, about four inches. And they've started over the last 50 years to get higher, 20, 30 years to get higher and higher and higher, to the point where you have this. And these two bonnets were both made by Mackies. They've been around since about 1843, I think. This is circa First World War. This is within the last 10 years or so. Let's look at the difference in elevation between these things. I'm just going to grab my chalk so you can see it. That's the difference in height between the two, right? So um, people often come to me because they're dissatisfied with how high these things are, and they use the word canoe head because it's like wearing a canoe on your head. Um, and so people have been asking about low-rise Glengarry's. I'm still trying to make that happen. But what I've done is I'm going to, I found this old Glengarry. It's of, it could be as old as the First World War, maybe the 30s or 40s. But it's manky and filthy and it's slightly too small, so I'm going to wash it and, str and, and stretch it out a little bit to make it fit. Now the good Glengarry's have, on the inside, you can feel, it feels like jute, the heavy carpet underlay, the heavy, coarsely woven material as a stiffener. The nasty ones, I've seen them with paper. This is a, um, a foreign made one, shall we say. And the quality isn't too good. And inside we have some sort of synthetic wrap in there, but underneath I feel something that feels like, well, let's just open it up and see, because I don't owe this thing anything. Yeah, that's cardboard. And if, we, if this thing gets wet, it turns to mush. Ridiculous. So, goodbye. So what I'm going to do with my old bonnet, now normally when we clean wool, we're always worried about removing the essential oil, the, the, the necessary oils, lanolin and the rest of it. This naturally occurs in the wool. That's why we don't dry clean. We don't throw in the washing machine. The best, the optimum is just to put it in water, cold or lukewarm water, and just let it soak and let the dirt float things off. But I want to, on the other hand, the problem with too much dirt in, the, in this wool is it's abrasive and it'll actually shorten the life of the, of the wool as, it, as the sharp particles move back and forth. So what I've done, our tools are <coughs> a bowl of water, which I would say it's, a, it's warm, it's not screamingly hot, but it's, it's just about bath water temperature, I would say. Normally I, would, I wouldn't recommend anything warmer than body temperature, but we're, we're using some extreme measures here. An ordinary bar of ivory hand soap, and this one looks manky as hell, and it's just because it's so very old. I'm, it, I'm using this old bar rather than unwrapping a fresh bar for this video, because all the ones upstairs have got aloe scent in them, and I, I, I don't like scented soaps at all, so we're using just plain old ivory soap. Now I take the bonnet, and I've unpicked the cockade, and that thing's definitely been through the wars, hasn't it? I submerge, submerge this thing, and I come over a little bit this way, in the water, and I'm not going to really twist it and man manhandle it and everything else, I'm just going to press it and squeeze it. Now I've already washed, I've already put this thing through one cycle, but let's give it a second cycle. Um, and I'm just rubbing the soap into the wool. I can see the holes from the various cap badges. Yeah, it looks all consistently Seaforth Highlanders to me. Um, and you can see, look how manky, the, this is the second wash cycle. And look how dirty it's getting. So we're gonna now maybe I should have taken the time to also remove the turry to sew it on. I think in future I think that's probably a good idea. But I have it this time. I'm gonna submerge it again and I'm just it floats up and I squeeze it down a bit. I'm not wringing it or anything else, but look how this is the second wash cycle and this is as dirty this is dirtier than the last. So I'm squeezing out like so. I'm going to give it a wash on the inside as well. The lining's 
pretty uh, pretty intact. The grow grain ribbon on the on the brim and the tails is actually still in really good condition. I have uh, a replacement source for that. I have a little bit left, so I can uh, for a while I'll be able to restore these things. So I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep washing this and changing the water. Look how filthy that is. I'm going to keep doing this until the water is clean and then I'm going to cycle it and then I'm going to do a couple of rinse cycles the same way, just gently squeezing it in clean water. And then I'm going to get as much water as, as, out of it as possible by squeezing it in this towel. And then the last thing, because this, thing's, this thing only fits me when I've had a really, really recent haircut. So what I'm going to do is what we used to do when I was a recruit. They used to tell us, you got your new bonnet, you wear it into the shower and walk around until it's dry. Now this is a lot less unpleasant in hot weather, but so yeah, when I, when I finish my washing cycle, I'm going to shape this to my head and it's stretched out a little bit already, which is good. And then I'm going to sort of lurk around the house for the rest of the day like this in the confidence, confident that this thing will, it's clean, it now fits me. When it's completely dry, I'll either attach this old cockade back on, just because it's got bags and bags of time in, or I'll sew on a new cockade, and away we'll go.